Alright, welcome back to another episode of Mem Creator Lore. Last episode, uh, we worked on some stuff, but I wanted to come back to the geode and work on it a little bit more. So basically, if we mine this in creative, then you can see that we don't get any items for it right at the moment. Uh, what I want to do today is work on getting a drop for this particular thing, which we'll be using for tools building blocks and some advanced uh, different types of features as well. So um, we'll be working on that today and getting a few different other bugs and stuff with this fixed up. Quick announcement at the end of the video, make sure to watch till the end. So the first thing that I wanted to do was get the texture for a item set up and we needed to create one. I spent actually quite a bit of time working on this particular texture trying to get a nice little crystal um, texture based on the amethyst uh, crystal or um, shard or whatever it's called um, to basically design it in a way that it will kind of be recognizable but also not like completely like too far-fetched for the design and stuff like that. It was a lot harder to design crystals like this than I thought it would be. Um, you know, when you actually see an item in Minecraft, you're like, oh, that looks pretty easy. It's pretty simple and stuff like that for the shape. Um, not always is that the case though, as I have found today. So um, I started working, this is like my second attempt already to actually get the crystal itself set up. And I wanted to go ahead and kind of design something a little bit different, but still give it some shape and design and stuff like that. And I wanted to kind of make it pointed as well. And it just seemed like whatever uh, design that I went with, it wasn't exactly doing what I wanted it to do. So like I wanted the base to be a lot bigger, but when you're working with 16 by 16 pixels, it's like really hard to do that. Um, when you start scaling up the resolution to uh, 64 or 32, then you have a lot more control over the shape. Uh, but when you're working with like 16 by 16, like now uh, the base games uh, textures and stuff like that, it makes it a lot harder to work with. And even though that you have a nice shape and stuff like this um, that I have currently, uh, it doesn't mean that it's gonna work out really well with the, when you actually fill in the colors and stuff like that. Um, when I started working with the colors itself here, I actually redesigned the crystal quite a few times. So I kind of blended it in with more of a generic shape, but I needed to see what the actual shading and everything would look like first, because that would vary depending on what the shape would actually be. So I started working with uh, some detailing work for the textures, trying to get like a, kind of gloss and view of that a little bit. And then I needed to kind of bring in the darker texture that we were having. And I was going to do kind of like a small line down the, the, the bottom and that will help with the shading a little bit um, because the shading at the bottom there is uh, a lot darker, but I used the darker lighter color for basically giving that extra uh, crystal depth uh, for the shine. And as I started working on it a little bit more, I could um, start working on figuring out the shape and stuff like that. So I started playing around with the bottom part just to see what it would look like if I were to do like a pointed part like this. And then I also uh, changed some of the design of the sh shape of the, the lines as well. Now this probably could have gotten away if I were to flip the entire thing around and have the larger part on the other side. That would have probably looked a little bit better. Um, but I wanted to kind of just try branching out the um, shape a little bit more and see if I can't get this to actually work in a more rounded scenario. So um, that's closer to what I settled with for the texture and stuff like that. but. I still needed to get a few different things set up. I wanted to make sure that the colors were just right and that there wasn't too much noise and stuff. So uh, as I started playing around with the textures a little bit more, I started just kind of figuring out what would be best for some of these textures. And I'm just like, each pixel I was kind of playing around with and zooming out and then zooming in. I covered that way back in the day for when I first started this series, what 
the reason for that is, but if you're not familiar, it's to get the um, perspective from a further distance. So it helps a little bit more. So I was happy with the texture and I saved it. And then I could import it into mCreator and then finally start working on an item. So I started working on the item. I'm gonna call this a uh, rose quartz uh, shard. And then we're going to go ahead and create a folder for that and then actually create the item. And then we'll take it from there. So the first thing I need to do is grab the item, import that, and then go ahead and uh, set the item. All the other settings I'm pretty much going to save except the uh, creative tab. I need to set that up and everything else should be good to go for everything that's already set up and stuff like that. We don't really need any right click events or anything just yet. So we're good to go for the item at least. So a few other things that I wanted to do was I wanted to fix the hitbox for these particular um, the, sh the I think I called it clusters. That's what the vanilla one is for the amethyst. So I wanted to fix the cl cluster sides for the um, the, sh the hitbox and also the block state for them. So I needed to figure out how I was going to work this into actually making it work for the workspace and stuff like that. And I forgot that I actually um, got it, got the texture and model rotated on a degree. So I was filling out the coordinates for the the block state for the thing. But right now what I'm doing is I'm just setting up the drop properties to drop nothing. We're going to run this through script instead for when the player breaks the block and then for when the player or when the block is actually broken. So these are two conditions that we'll have our drop mechanics for which will control the, um, basically one's going to control the tool that we're going to be using. And we're going to make sure that the main hand item is going to be selected for that. And we're probably not going to compare the item to a specific one. What we're going to do instead is we're going to go ahead and make sure that it is a pickaxe though. And we can use this block for that. And then we're going to go ahead and make sure that it's a pickaxe. And we're also going to want to test uh, for a material type. So basically, if the material is like stone or something like that, we're going to need to run a couple tags and test if it's um, above or equal to a specific tag. And then we can work from there. So basically, I wanted to go ahead and create a item tag for this. And we're going to basically test if the item in the main hand is going to be of um, tail of biomes and then we're going to do the colon and then we're going to test if the it's a tool and then a specific type of tool so a material of a tool so first for this one I'm going to do um, stone and then what I'm going to do is test for the other one for metal uh, we might add more different types later on I might want to create a secondary condition um, for a return block to get a value so we can update these particular things a little bit easier. We might do that in the next video uh, just quickly or I might do it off camera, I'm not sure. But basically what I will be doing is returning the value for this particular those two tags and getting the value in a um, calling in the value here. So basically that will allow me to just update one material or one procedure and it should sync across the entire workspace. So we'll probably do that next episode or I might do it off camera. But right now what I want to do is I want to make sure that the um, clusters are going to drop something to begin with. So I'm going to go ahead and drop one crystal for this. And what I need to do is set up the um, block location. I'm trying to move everything over to local variables as possible that um, basically requires um, constant use over things like for example the block state. I needed to make sure the block state was passed over rather than call it every time and test for it. We can just store it to memory which is what local variables does right and then it, when the procedure is over it releases that uh, storage and then we can use uh, it's just way better for performance that way. So 
For example, I am setting up coordinates for the offset for what I need for this and for the drops. And then what I'm doing is I'm just basically uh, shifting the coordinates and then we can go ahead and uh, apply the coordinates to the spawn gem block, which will then basically add in these procedures. So the other thing that I wanted to do was I need to go ahead and create a drop for different values for between the different states. And that's basically what I'm doing here is I'm just testing for the state and then I'm going ahead and dropping a different amount for it um, based on the um, level of the state it is. So if it's a higher state, you get a little bit more, I think up to four, where if it's a lower state, you, you get the only one. So now I needed to do this for the other block as well, or for the other procedure for when the block is broken. Uh, this is not linked to a player, but uh, rather than a world event, so like explosion or something like that. So I need to go ahead and replace a few blocks in here to make that one work and then relink it because um, I forgot that it didn't support block states. So we need to um, get that all set up. So uh, now it should drop properly. Now I'm going to focus my attention over on to the models for the, the, the hitbox. So the easiest way to figure out the hitbox location or hitbox size and everything like that is uh, one to go in here and kind of measure it out and kind of figure out what I need for the variables. Now this is all fine and dandy, but uh, it doesn't get the rotation sadly. So I ended up going back into Blockbench and um, looking at our model and basically sizing it up for the actual model itself. Uh, the reason why I did this was because um, I plugged in the coordinates and as a single direction, that's easy, like in a 2D view like this, but when you're working with the 3D model, uh, it has multiple rotations and stuff. So the, the rotation might be a little bit different based on the side. So basically what I did was I set it up for one side and then I, when I went to test it, uh, it wasn't actually set up correctly, so I needed to go back into Blockbench and uh, use a technique that I discovered, um, which is like a third technique to actually get the, the size of the hitboxes and stuff like that. There's one through the config file, there's one through um, using the pivot point, and of course there is now the auto-generate feature, but because we're using rotation for the, the hitboxes, we can't really... Uh, use that particular feature as it doesn't detect the hitbox rotation but um, there's a few different other ones you can do as well I can't remember them um, offhand but right now I was just adding the tags for the tools and making sure that uh, we have the material set up so when we do go test to make sure that the um, block can be broken and it gives us some items back that we will be able to actually use this so I'm changing some of the names around we do have stone tools I'm going to actually call the stone one rock instead, which will allow us to uh, test for rock uh, or stones and other rock-like materials. Um, there will also be one for metal, and I might even make a um, heavier tier for that, but we need to give these, um, these tiers names and stuff like that. So... Um, I might need to um, come up with some other more advanced names for different tiers if we do decide to expand. I also added support for wood tools and stone as well as metal for the time being. And each tool set will have its own tool variant uh, or tool category. And we're going to just lump them all under one particular thing. And then that way we can test for the tool specifically. And we might add uh, one set for any custom tools like the sickles and the stuff that we've added. Uh, this will allow us to uh, make sure that we can get a specific tool type. So basically we'll test for the material and then test for the tool. But um, for the most part, most of the tools that we have right now are going to be able to be tested through the material or pardon me, through the tool type, which uh, we were already used in our procedure today. So. All right, so I was just setting up the rock and then I needed to set up the wood one for the, um, the wood variant and everything should be set to go. I just need to make sure that the names are properly set up and then we can go ahead and test this in game. So 
um, need to discover a few extra things. Just make sure uh, that I'm working on everything and I needed to update the variable. So I'm in game now and I can break the, some of the blocks. I got one uh, rose quartz for that and we're going to break a couple more just to make sure that we are getting multiple gems from this particular uh, block. And I wanted to also test if the wooden tools would work or if they wouldn't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to our wooden tool one. And we're going to grab the pickaxe for this. And we're going to go back into survival. And I'm going to break that and we shouldn't get anything from these blocks. So it doesn't look like we're going to get anything from it, which is great. But we do get it from the stone tools. So that's basically how I could implement that part. Now, you might notice that some of this is not working. Uh, as you can see, like some of the crystals and stuff, the hitboxes are a little bit off um, based on the rotation and stuff like that. The full one's fine, but the other rotations are a little bit uh, wonky for the hitbox and stuff. So we're going to try to fix that. And again, this is the problem with actually setting up the um, rotation based on the texture is you don't get the 3D depth. So in Blockbench, what I did was I went ahead and created a model and I just added a new cube. And I'm going to encase my actual texture with this. And that way we can go ahead and basically test for the size of it. And we'll set up the rotation and everything for that. So basically we're setting the pivot point to the opposite corner from the axis on the display there. And if you don't know where the axis is, it, it's the green, blue, and uh, red lines that are in the thing. So basically I'm just plugging in the coordinates for the default state for the um, item. And then we're going to go over to our block state and we're going to go ahead and update the texture for this. And we're gonna resize the, um, the actual cube that we have and we're going to go ahead and readjust the pivot point to make sure that it's going to be on the proper side so I'm going to move this out a little bit more and I need to actually expand the sides a little bit more as well and make sure everything is encased in this particular size so once I've done that I can go ahead and select the um, size here make sure the pivot points all set up I can just plug in the pivot point for the maximum and the minimum for the actual starting location for the size there. And then we can go ahead and set that one. So we just have one more to do and I need to get that cube out of the way. And then we're going to go ahead and set the size to our second size for our second ID for the box state, which is actually like our third model. And I'm going to resize this a little bit more just to make sure that it will fit in and then we can go ahead and make sure that everything is set up and we're going to go ahead and plug in our data here so i'm going to just make sure that all these are set for the minimum and maximum that should fix the rotation issue uh, for the hitbox part now the, the final one where the the state is fully the full size we don't actually need to worry about because it's already taken care of uh, it's just mainly the um, the ones with the smaller size. So if we go in here, you can see that it's all aligned now. We can click on or show that all of the sizes are pretty much set up now. So that should work a lot better than what we had before. And again, if we break them, then we get some of the gems. And we'll be using those gems for more advanced things, uh, tools, as well as um, advanced machines and stuff like that later on which i will probably be working on um an idea now there's some st still some technical issues with the block breaking i will be fixing that off camera basically what i need to do is make sure that the model itself is not uh over the size that the crystal is so i need to shrink the model a little bit more for the smaller ones so it doesn't have all that breaking texture on all the f the the invisible texture parts but that's some pretty easy fix to do. So outside of that, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I do have a quick announcement uh, at the very end here, so definitely stay tuned. And I will hopefully see you guys next week, and we'll be working on another tutorial for um, structures.
I have this friend that has their own server hosting company and they have the lowest prices in the server hosting community and they've given me a promo code to give to you guys. So if you want to get a good deal for the first month, then you can use the promo code NORTHWEST for 45% off your first month. Offer expires July 19th, 2034. The link to their site is in the description.